This week's small business show, and I'm delighted that I'm here at the uh, Nexus Innovation Center. I'm talking with Barry from uh, Aralis. Uh, thanks very much for joining us. Cheers, thanks for having me. Uh, first of all, Aralis, what is it that you do? Um, at Aralis, we're, we're very focused on solving this societal thirst for kind of high data rate communications and higher and higher resolution uh, radar technology. So that, that's our key focus. Um, and to the, to, the, to the layman in the street, what does that mean? That was my layman's <laughs> explanation. <so. laughs> I, essentially, I mean, the layman is, is the causer of all these problems. Um, the layman wants higher and higher data rates communication. They want, they want wireless data and they want it, they want it everywhere. And um, so that, that's really, that's the big picture. That's the, the stuff we're uh, solving. And then in terms of, in terms of high resolution, Resolution radar, I guess, where people interact with it most will be in automotive. Uh, that, that's where the layman will get involved. And so people have reversing sensors in their cars and things like that. Well, the very high end automotive um, cars, so the, your car, um, has a. It's not So they, they're at 77 gigahertz now, so mm -hmm. they, they, you know, the, the cars can park themselves essentially. So we center at 94 gigahertz. And what that means is just higher resolution. So as you move into more autonomous vehicles and things like that, then the higher resolution becomes much more important. So we tend to only go one way with this stuff. We want more data and we want higher resolution. And that's where we focus. That's, that's where our, our... And it's been interesting as well, your journey. I was talking to you beforehand and from all the information, all the things that I, that I know about you, I kind of followed you over the past couple of years as well. It's, I thought you were, you know, this company that was here for a very long time. You're, you're two years old, three years old in, in actuality. Yeah, two years young. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we, we kicked off pretty much around December of 2013. So yeah, we kind of had our, our two year anniversary this year. So um, yeah, and it's 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 been it's been busy. Mm. Um, it's been exciting. I suppose it. We've we've had to do a lot, but you do a lot in the first two years anyway. You know, if you're not doing a lot in your first couple of years, you know. That's true. Yeah. yeah. And talk to me a little bit about some of the stuff that you've done recently as well. You've done, uh, you know, a major contract with the Ministry of Defence as well in the mm -hmm. UK with the, some interesting stuff. Tell us, how did you get that contract, and what was it for? Yeah, so that, that, that contract is probably a good definition of, of how the whole aerospace and defence industry is changing. Um, so the, in, in the UK, they've, they've basically changed procurement. Um, and what they do is they, they've now made a lot of defence contracts and things like that um, open to SMEs. And in fact, SMEs have a, have a bit of an advantage. Mm. Um, so traditionally, if you wanted to get into the MOD, you, you had to be a big company, you had to have a big balance sheet, you had to have all that. Whereas now they've leveled the playing field and made it open competition. Um, so they had a requirement, they, they, it, basically it was for geolocation of soldiers. To, so the soldier knew where he was at all time because it's, it's very important in the, in the, in the new defense space that um, it, really they don't ever want a, a soldier to encounter a bullet. Um, and it's as simple as that, you know, they don't, they don't want any loss of life in, in, in modern warfare. So that's what it was all about. It fitted perfectly with what we were doing. So we, we were doing a lot of research around the area of geolocation, but high accuracy geolocation. So the, G, the GPS that's in your phone, uh, that accuracy is about 20, 30 meter accuracy. Uh, we were doing work on, on millimeter accuracy, centimeter accuracy, because one thing we know, with all this data rate and all this resolution, you need to know where the vehicle is, you need to know where your spacecraft is, you need to know exactly where it is, not within 20 to 30 meters. So it kind of fitted perfectly. So they put out a tender for that and um, we, we went into an open tender and uh, we, we came out on top, which was great because we, we've since learned we were up against, we were up against two of the biggest uh, aerospace companies in the world wow. um, and we came out on top. So that, that was really good. So I suppose the second exciting bit of that is they've, they've now given us a second contract okay. to go and produce the, the antenna so that's that's a huge endorsement and what's interesting about that as well is that here you have a, a company like yourselves up against 
companies who effectively could throw any amount of money at, at a kind of situation and create it, and yet here you are still being uh, getting it, getting the contracts and you know being asked to come back again to, to do something else as well. Yeah, and I think that's what everyone's waking up to, and I think that you know even the European Space Agency and NASA and all these guys are all changing how to do things because physics is physics. That doesn't change no matter how much money you have. Mm. So it's not like monkeys and typewriters and you'll get Shakespeare. You know, it, it, even in 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 Airbus or if it's in Boeing or wherever it's one or two engineers that normally come up with these solutions. So if you've got the good guys, um, then, then you can do it too. And uh, we, we, we just happen to have some really good guys that could go out and do that. And I don't include myself in that <laughs> equation, I can assure you. And, and speaking of that as well, when I came in here as well, you had some imaginary workers, as they say, the virtual <laughs> workers there. Uh, so you have people working for you in different parts of the world as well. No, it's, it's actually, no, they're working for us here, but they just, no, no one ever seems to be here. In fact, you, you were lucky to catch me. Um, look, we're in Limerick in mm -hmm. South of Ireland. Um, if, if you're not leaving this island and you're in aerospace and defense, then you're, you're barking up the wrong tree. Mm -hmm. uh, we've got to be, we've got to be on the road all the time. So, so Mike and myself do most of the kind of sales traveling, but and so we'd be away most of the time. Um, but then the other guys, like, uh, yeah, one of our guys is Spanish. So he's at the moment, he's, he's having an extended uh, holiday. He's back at home. So he's, he's working from there. Mm -hmm. um, again, physics doesn't change. The technology's changed. Physics doesn't change. He can do his job from there. Um, and then we, we have a design center in Belfast and, and the guys there. So everyone has to interact anyway from different offices. So yeah, and on any given day, there can be, there can be one or 10 people in the room, you know? And you've got uh, a lovely addition to your office uh, coming soon as well, your little uh, research hub, as people might be able to see in the background from this camera. So. Yeah, so yeah, we're, we're, we're building a, a research lab. We kind of weren't happy with, with maybe the, the speed of um, supply chain in terms of when you just want to iterate something quickly um, and want to fabricate something quickly. And that in our space, actually, that traditionally you don't. Um, you know, traditionally you take three to five months to kind of develop something new. That doesn't suit us. Uh, you've probably sensed we're in a, a rush yeah. with what we want to do. So yes, we're building this out so that we can, we can basically turn around our R&D much quicker. Um, and that means working with things like 3D printing and all that fun stuff. And know? does the realization that you were up against those big companies push you even harder to, because you know that, that they're in the same space, they're doing the, trying to do the same thing that you're doing mm. and that they've got a much bigger budget to do it and so you have to constantly keep going and, and push that. Yeah, and I think as well though, I, I, having worked in the industry for a while, you know that that's probably their biggest disadvantage as well, that they are the old big companies. Um, and especially in our space, the, you know, we, we're running out of RF engineers, really good guys, um, and so are those guys. Um, so they have a lot of very senior people but people who have who do things because they've always done that mm -hmm. way, you know, and, and we hear that every day, and that's brilliant. Every time I go to a company and they say, I say, why are you doing it this way? And they say, well, we've always done it this way. We know we're going to get that customer. Um, it's great because once you show those guys, you know, there's another way of doing this. It can be done. You know, I mean, if you're showing anyone that you can do it better, mm -hmm. but you can also do it cheaper and quicker, you know. That's that's a no-brainer. Um, okay, it still takes time, um, but at the same time, they're they're going to get there eventually. So, what do you hope that this research room turns into? Is this going to be your your thought center, the the place where all the great ideas come from, like you said before? Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's 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 about um, it's about hacking them together quickly. Um, and it, as I say, that generally isn't done, and it's about doing it all in, this, in the same space and, and doing it quickly, you mm. know. And so having all the tools there at hand that you can have an idea and then just, just iterate and, and, and build it. And then we do all the testing in our design centre in Belfast. Mm. So, I mean, we can, uh, we can have our, our stuff there on the same day. And uh, the guys put it in the anechoic chamber and we have results. I did a, an interview earlier on today, actually, with uh, Alexander Jukic from the Tyndall Institute in, uh, down in Cork mm -hmm. and they had de him and his team had developed a, a, um, a radiation detection, uh, real-time radiation mm -hmm. detection system for, for the ISS, the International Space Station. And I, I asked him at the end of the interview, is it strange or is it interesting or how do you feel when you realize that a piece of equipment that you've made is floating around the earth or, or out in space moving at you know tens of thousands of kilometers per second? 
Mm. Is it is it any, is it a strange feeling or is it just that's my job? I've done it and they they have it. Yeah, well, I mean, for me, I'm I'm a bit childish about it. I still get really giddy. I was with the Tyndall guys actually out in ISA this week, yeah. um, and I, to be honest, I get worried about people who don't get excited when they go to ISA. I mean, we're we're standing in the, the ISS pods, and we're you know you get to go in and see this stuff, and then the next time you see it, it's Tim Peake walking around in it. So no, I think that that never loses the excitement, um, and when something's launching that maybe you were involved in, or mm. even no matter how small your involvement was and I think that that gets you that gets you really excited but it's also it's huge endorsement in terms of what you're trying to do so like you won't get rich mm. with space yeah that that's that's key it's you, what, is, is it you create the technology perhaps the one-stop technology that goes up the space but the technology that you created has perhaps more pipeline opportunities exactly down here. exactly yeah yeah and that's been the tradition of space things have been created for space in in one of and then it's about commercialization of that and i think that's really important and that's why it was really good to hear you know the announcement during the week that that we're now setting up a business incubator mm -hmm. an ESA uh, business incubator in in ireland that's with enterprise ireland the space team there that that's huge because that's really important that you then start taking those technologies that, that Tyndall are developing mm -hmm. and maybe one of those or two of those guys that develop it spin out and set up a company and then commercialize mm -hmm. that and bring that on because yeah space space technology generally isn't the business um, it's what you do with that that's after you know after. yeah yeah and I think that's <laughs> so it, and we, we were I was talking to the European Space Agency about this the other day as well and we were saying, saying they were talking about some company that they were trying to get them to adapt their technology for mm -hmm. for ESA and I said well that's they're never going to do it because mm -hmm. if you've got a commercial application you're not then going to start making onesies and twosies you know so and they, they, they were kind of laughing about it and and they agree you know it's it, it has to be you do the one and two for the space it's a bit like it's a bit like a bugatti isn't it i mean you you make you know you're not going to make a lot you're not yeah. going to make money off it but yeah my word it gets you it gets you noticed absolutely and 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 that's huge as well in in our space for us it was a huge endorsement when the european space agency placed an order because everyone knows the toughest customer is a space agency the tolerances yeah you know, it has there to be no, there, there's no margin for error no no and it's it's really and that that's kind of we've got really good people here that that, that know how to how to uh, deliver to the space agency so that's that's cool so what's next for you guys it's a it's a brand new year it's 2016 you know, we've heard about your your space contracts, your Ministry of Defence contracts, all of mm. those kind of interesting things. What do you hope 2016 comes, or or what's in the pipeline? Yeah, I mean, the, the commercialisation side is very much underway. So we're outside of those. We tend not to do announcements then on the because you know the, the customers don't don't want it. Um, but yeah, we've we've got a lot we've got a lot going on. So in, just in the last month alone, we closed orders for our chips in in Korea. Um, south, um, in Russia, uh, in the States. We've got a lot of stuff going on in the States. Uh, we were out in LA just before Christmas. The, the, uh, the excitement at that end was, was, mm. was incredible and we're, we're turning that into orders now. So that, that's really where it's going and it's the commercial application. So um, as I say, to date, to date it's been mostly around the radar side. Mm. Uh, the comm side is becoming much more impressive now. So I think in, in the next year, I think you're going to hear a lot. We're going to be bleating a lot about what we're doing because um, I, I think we'll, we'll probably demonstrate the fastest wireless uh, speeds ever demonstrated. Uh, that's one of our goals this year. Wow. So we want to blow Nokia out of the water. They did a demonstrator at 73 what gigahertz. What are we looking at? 15 gigabits over 15, uh, 15 gigabits per second over 15 kilometers. Wow. Yeah, so that's wireless fiber. Mm. So you, you, you're not going to be digging up the roads in a couple of years to put in in high-speed uh, links, and I think that the, actually that's something to watch anyway across the the globe for the next couple of years because 5G. There's a lot of talk about 5G. No one knows what it's going to be. Uh, what we do know is it's going to involve satcoms for the mm. first time ever. So satellite companies are going to have a role. Now the traditional ter terrestrial guys, mm. they can't become space companies, but the space guys can come down and eat mm. terrestrials lunch. But but putting things into space. Yeah, I suppose in relatives, there, the price has come down as well. We've see, we see we yeah. see Tesla and and companies like that, you know, unmanned rockets, shoot them up, let them go, bring them back down. And, absolutely, you know. yeah, absolutely. No, it's incredible. I mean, we're we're, we're working with guys in the states who um who put a satellite up for for five hundred k. 
Um, it's incredible. And, so, and it has to, for, for because low Earth orbit is really important for comms, because essentially, traditionally, uh, geostationary satellites, there's a latency issue. It doesn't matter mm -hmm. for satellite TV, because it's not two-way. Yeah. But for two-way, it's got to be, the satellite has to be closer. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that's where low Earth orbit is becoming really important. But of course, the closer it is to Earth, the more you need. So when you've one web talking about first project with 4,000 satellites, mm -hmm. it, it can only go that way. So I think that's where we're in a really good position, because we built ourselves for scale. Our, our entire supply chain is about scale. Our kind of our industry, the millimeter wave industry, has a tradition of being kind of squirrels in a basement. Mm. Um, <laughs> we're trying to get away from that. We're trying to get into you know scale. It has to be scalable mm. and that and price. I mean, we're already we're about ten times smaller than our competitors in terms of the uh, with the same power and the same performance. But is that but is that uh, is that to your advantage though? Is it not because you're you're able to develop this stuff? in your own time, you know the speed, you know what you have to get, you know what you have to do, and you go out and do it. You don't have to go to a manager who has to go to a manager who has to go to a manager to sign things off, to do all these kind of stuff. You know what needs to be done, you go do it, end up. Yeah, 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 and we're, we're, we're kind of, yeah, we're, we're, and we're pig-headed around that as well, and we're just doing it. And we're not waiting for people to issue the PO and say, you know, we just think, no, you need it. Uh, let's get it done, and I think that's that's paying off. You know. That's, that's so, I, I, am I right in saying that you, 2016, the goal is to revolutionise wireless communications by the sound of it? Yeah, it is, and and the radar stuff as well. I think that that's really exciting, and the geolocation. So it's the combination of the three of those, and really commercialising it, getting it down to a, the price points and the scale, the size, and the repeatability that the drone applications, um, the, the commercial drone applications. We're doing, we're doing stuff with drones, but it's, it's in onesie, twosie zone as well. Yes, as well, the, the manned drones now will be able to bring you across the city. Yeah. Um, when they, of course, change the laws where people can fly across the city. Yeah. Those things, but and, yeah, and I think the whole drone space is, is, is going to be really interesting. So I, I met with a drone lawyer recently, and, and just really interesting to talk to those mm -hmm. guys, because they just think, all these small drones are just going to be wiped out, gone. Yeah. Good luck. They're going to be taken away. And it raises an interesting question as well. CES is on at the moment, the Consumer Electronics Show, massive mm. uh, electronics show that happens in Las Vegas every year. For somebody like you guys, do you watch that intently, see what's going on, what's the trends, what are people looking at, or does that not kind of come into your kind of space? To be so honest, you're, you're yeah. You're commercializing pipelines down the, down the road. I always worry about people who learn things from CES. Um, because you really haven't got your your finger on the pulse if you if that's the first time you've heard of it. Yeah. Um, we we tend to watch trends a little earlier than that. Uh, you can see it from papers that people are producing. You see when you're out there in industry, you find out what guys are up to. Um, by the time it's in CES, you're too late. I think that's and I, I think it's a big problem out there is people are kind of waiting till till that and then cutting through the noise or something like CES is is very difficult. Mm -hmm. From a, a consumer point of view, I sometimes look at it and go, "Oh, yeah, that'll be interesting." But, oh but in terms, of, yeah, yeah. But in terms of the trend, especially because we're more enabling technologies and infrastructural technologies, really, the the stuff that happens at CES happens because of companies maybe like ourselves, the the sub suppliers to those guys. Mm. So, if if Samsung can't buy a 60 gigahertz. Mm. Um, chipset to, to, to do their, their um, very high-speed Wi-Fi, well then they won't produce that product. Mm. So I think that's, w w we hear about things a few years beforehand because we're developing the technologies that will be in, in CES in maybe two, three years time. Fantastic. If people want to find out more about uh, all the brilliant work that you're doing here, uh, other than catching you frequently in newspapers and media <laughs> because of all the wonderful things that you're doing, where can they get it? Yeah, I mean our website, it's, it's Aralis, www.aralis.com, um, you'll find out a little bit. We're not great at, at keeping it updated, but we promise that's one of our New Year's resolutions, <laughs> uh, is to improve our, our communication side of things. Absolutely, fantastic. Barry, thanks very much for joining us on the Small Business Show, and uh, stay tuned and we're going to have more great interviews throughout the year as well for this, but for now, thank you very much. Cheers, fantastic. pleasure, absolute pleasure.